Well, I'm excited. Uh, today I am going to start making a brazola. Um, that's just going to be a uh, cured and dry aged beef roast. What I have here is a whole eye of round beef roast that I picked up the other day. It's currently 3.354 kilograms in weight. Um, it's going to be significantly less than that when all is said and done, but this should be pretty awesome. So this has been obviously cryovac What I'm going to do is just pull out the roast itself. I'm going to pat it all clean and kind of see what it looks like here. Dump this off in the sink for now. And from a good friend, paper towel. Clean off all this sweet meat juice. Oh yeah. Okay, now I believe traditionally these are cleaned of all fat and silver skin and stuff like that. Uh, I think, however, I'm going to try to leave some of this fat on because fat is flavor. Um, but I am seeing like over here some silver skin and stuff like that. So I am going to try to just wind up removing a little bit of that and like this kind of funky connective tissue here. I don't want that. Um, so I'm just going to go around this and kind of trim off what I can, salvage some of the fat though, just so that winds up in the finished product, and um, we'll see what that looks like when that's cleaned up. So here it is, uh, trimmed up. So I got rid of all the silver skin that was over on this side here. There was a little bit over here as well. Um, the nice thing about using a uh, whole muscle like this as opposed to a roast that might have multiple muscles is that uh, I shouldn't wind up with any connective tissue on the inside just because that makes for a little bit uh, difficulty chewing and whatnot the finished product which isn't fun. I have left this whole fat, uh, I guess we can call it a fat cap, across uh, the one end here um, which hopefully will have just a nice ribbon of fat then in the, the finished slices of this. So I'm going to get a weight now see much how much we've lost between my trimming and whatever juices came out in the bag itself so it's down to that says 2969 oh 2988 2988 okay that'll be easy to remember um now i'm basing my recipe here off of uh, a website called local food heroes um the really nice thing about that i might adapt it ever so slightly but the nice thing about that uh, website is that the guy has his recipe and a calculator on there so all I'm going to have to do is plug in the weight of my meat and it'll give me um, all the weights um, and measurements for the spices that are going to my cure so I'm just going to quickly get that stuff measured out and I will show you what I'm putting on this all right so I got everything all calculated out and I have combined some of the ingredients here so uh, I'm not going to give you measurements because if you go to that website you can calculate everything yourself based on the weight of your meat but in here I've got my cure number two uh, I've got the salt. Now his recipe called for 2.8% salt. I actually dialed it down to 2.5% just because I don't want to risk over salting it because I'm trying to kind of watch the saltiness. Um, and it also has some granulated sugar. And then in the, I guess we can call that the herb or seasoning blend there, um, I did make a couple of... Yeah, though sugar, yeah. In this one, I made a couple of little quick changes. Uh, first of all, I used uh, garlic salt instead of garlic powder, and I actually increased that by 50% just because I want to get it nice and garlicky. Um, for the pepper, uh, as you can see here, there's some crushed peppercorns in there. Um, those were smoked peppercorns that I made, um, and I used uh, dried thyme, but I increased that slightly. It was calling for one and a half grams, I went to two grams. Uh, and then for the rosemary, I had fresh rosemary that had actually somewhat dried out just sitting in the fridge. Um, and I went about 50% more of the rosemary for that. And then I took the juniper, the thyme, the rosemary, the pepper, threw it all into a mortar, uh, ground it up with a mortar and pestle, and then also added the uh, garlic salt in with that. So that is all of that stuff. Now I'm going to um, actually now mix all of it together. Let's give it a quick stir with a fork here. Um, and then I'm going to combine everything in the um, in the meat tub on the meat and just rub it there. Okay, whatever. Close enough. Can I take it? Yeah, just slide over there, kiddo. Okay, just gonna get this all into here. Yeah, that's right. Rub it all over the meat. Hey, what kind of meat is that? This is an eye of round roast, and we're turning it into a brazola, which is going to be cured and dry aged. 
So we're going to go just like this. Um, now that everything is basically on here, you'll also see that a bunch of it has fallen off into the tub. That's not a big deal. I'm going to very quickly make a vacuum seal bag that's long enough to contain this and a little bit. Then I'm going to slide this into the bag and just scoop out any remaining seasoning and cure and get that into the bag. So you'll get to take a peek at that once everything is in the vacuum bag. So I've got it in there in the bag. Uh, you can also see through here, I just scooped out the excess and kind of dumped it around both sides of the bag. Uh, it doesn't really matter um, how, uh, how it's distributed at this point. I'm going to vac mostly vacuum seal it-ish, okay? Um, so that there's still just a little bit of room for stuff to kind of move around. And then, um, yeah, we'll see what that looks like. All right, so this is, it, it was hitting the point in the vacuum seal, uh, Sealer when it uh, closed up just before it really started to crank away and suck stuff out. Uh, and that's when I sealed it. I've actually double sealed both ends just to prevent any possibility of anything leaking out. And um, I'm going to put this in my keg freezer, which is set at 36 Fahrenheit, so it's really nice and cold. Um, every day or so, I'm just going to kind of mush it around a little bit. And as uh, liquid starts to come out of this uh, beef roast, it's going to be able to slip around in here a little bit. And that'll ensure just sort of a more even distribution of the seasonings and stuff that's in there. So, yeah, uh, this is going to sit in there for 30 days like this, um, curing. At which point it will be ready to uh, rinse off, wrap, and uh, begin to dry age. Here we have the brazola after one day with the cure in there. Uh, you can see that I, I dated this and then also put down the original weight. Um, I'm going to wind up re-weighing it uh, post-cure just so I, I have an accurate number for my weight loss for that. But you can see here that already we've got some liquid that's coming out um, of the beef. So I'm just going to kind of massage things a little bit here, you know, give my meat a good rub. Um, and help distribute everything here. And as uh, more juice comes out, that'll just be even easier to do here. Uh, so um, probably once a day, every other day, just whenever I remember, because this is an extended period of time, you know, we have uh, a month here. Um, I'll come by and just pull this out of the fridge and do this. Well, the adventure with the Brazola continues. Um, it has actually been uh, five and a half weeks since I started this. Uh, life kind of got in the way and I just haven't had time to actually deal with it. Uh, however, uh, everything's looking awesome on the inside here. I'm not concerned about any, anything. Whew. Oh my goodness. Smell that. Oh, so much, so much aroma going on here. This is fantastic. Okay, I, I can only hope that all of that aroma translates into amazing flavor in this. Um, so what I'm going to do quickly is just rinse stuff off. A really quick rinse um, to clean it up a little bit here. Don't have to get everything off, but I am looking to get uh, most of the little chunks of um, spices and whatever off of here. There's yeah, nice. Okay, so um, I'm just going to drain this off, pad this dry, and then we are going to play with uh, a casing. Alrighty then. So we are uh, all dried off. I'm just going to set it on this very delicate thing. Oh my goodness, that's interesting. It actually picked up some weight. Does that make any sense? Hold on, zero. Okay, so gonna play around with the scale here make sure that I'm not yeah 3023 grams that's crazy because we started out with 2988 so it has actually picked up a little bit of uh, a little bit of weight there um, awesome okay cool so I'm going to record that and uh, just kind of get stuff set up here so that we can get this in the casing so here we are um, now what I'm gonna do before I wrap this in this collagen casing is I'm just gonna give it a super light spritz with uh, some just some white vinegar um, just as a way of helping uh, reduce potential of any kind of uh, adverse uh, mold activity. I might wind up picking up some white mold uh, that will get on this and we'll do whatever but um, I just want to <laughs> kind of start with a clean slate if you will. So with this collagen casing I'm going to bring it around. I need to cut it right about here. 
I'll have a little bit of overlap in a couple of spots, but that is not a big deal. This and that might end up working well for some pork tenderloins or something like that. Okay, try and keep it nice and tightly wrapped around here. Awesome. So anyway, um, I'm going to trim off a little bit of this excess here. That's not too bad. Okay, sweet. So kind of going with the same direction uh, here. I'm just going to use, uh, I was looking for my 3 8 uh, hog rings, which I did find here. So I've got 3 8 and halfers. Not that I've ever really needed the half inch ones for anything yet, but perhaps one day. Okay, so there's the one. Here's the other side, and then we'll try and deal with any air pockets here um, in a moment. So I'm just going to twist that around. Smart guy probably would set this ring in here before twisting everything. All right, and on. Okay, so now it's just a matter of uh, we've got some little air pockets here, so I'm just going to use my little uh, sausage uh, prickers in some spots to help eliminate some of these air pockets, um, which will again help prevent uh, any kind of unfortunate uh, mold that I don't want uh, in these pockets or bacteria or anything like that, because it's somewhat uh, anaerobic. Awesome, okay, that'll be pretty good. I'll take another peek once I get this uh, netting on here. So this is a fun part to do by yourself with one set of hands. Okay, sliding it on, up and over. Nice, no problem. Okay, and this netting is going to uh, make it super easy for when I have it hanging in the curing chamber, just to make sure that there's uh, a relatively even pressure going around this, helping it keep its shape, um, and also just um, supporting stuff as, uh, as it dries, and even uh, pressure on everything. Okay, so there is a slight uh, tear in that casing. Um, so I'm just going to patch it with an extra little piece of this uh, collagen casing that I had cut off from the end. So we'll do this. And the nice thing here too is that the netting will help hold this in place. Um, yeah, there we go, perfect. So it's almost like nothing ever happened. And honestly, when this is done, that casing is uh, going to come off anyway and it's gonna get sliced. So, just looking around, making sure that everything else looks copacetic. Beautiful. All right, so now to quickly tie up these ends here. Just going to run this uh, butcher's twine through the holes of the netting. Obviously not bothering to put them through every single hole. Uh, we're just looking to get through, you know, every third or fourth one. And then, oh, sweet, you can just tie it, pinch it together here, like that. Fantastic. Uh, I am going to leave that one string a little bit long because I'm going to uh, throw a piece of tape with um, not only the uh, current weight, of this but also our target weight um, and just labeling the, the meat as well just so I know what it is so I'm just gonna get this last one on here and when we come back we will be over at the carrying chamber all right so I'm actually gonna have to move stuff around a little bit in here because um, this needs to hang down on one of the lower ones so I'm gonna move my frizzantinis out of the way so um, yeah the uh, have the original weight there 3023 grams and then our target weight of 1814 grams. I'm just going to set that Rosola right back in there. Curing chamber, and you can see that I've got some uh, cocoa mussels and stuff that I picked up on sale the other day. Uh, going to make some more Capicola. But for now, that's going to go. We're looking for a 40% weight loss on this, and I'm guessing that's going to take probably a few months. Uh, it just kind of depends how things are in the chamber. So, yeah, uh, we'll check on it once it's uh, lost a little weight.
All right, so after uh, this hit a 40% target weight, what I did was just vacuum seal it up and it's actually been sitting in here for three and a half months, which is maybe a little bit more time than it needed to equalize, but um, I just really, really wanted to make sure that it was as equalized as possible. It looks awesome and I am super nervous to cut into it, but that is exactly what we are about to do. So, pull this out. Oh my goodness. It smells so amazing. All those spices and the pepper and the smoke. And, uh, okay, I'm just going to cut a little bit off the one side here. And then we're going to rip her off on the slicer. So here we are looking at the inside. Yeah, nice and equalized. Oh, that is beautiful. Okay, so get this going. I currently have this set at one mil. Let's see how that looks. Slice myself. Hey, Dada, yes. Are you making pizza? I am not making pizza. No, I am cutting some meat. Oh, welcome, welcome to my life. Yeah, uh, we'll be making dinner. We'll be having this for dinner. So look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Look at the color. Oh. Mmm. The pepper, the thyme, the beef. This. This is fantastic. Um. Mmm, yeah. So taking a, a cut of beef that was relatively inexpensive on sale, okay, just giving a little bit of love, playing around with it here for a bit. Um, and and look, how, look how much this is. This is almost two kilograms left here of this brazola. This is extremely exciting. Absolutely bears repeating, folks. Um, I'm going to just kind of portion this out into small chunks, have it vacuum sealed, and then anytime I want some, I can just uh, cut it off on the slicer here. So... Whew. Okay, mission was absolutely a success. I don't think I would change anything. So yeah, uh, don't be afraid to play with your meat. Um, till next time, keep her at 11.